Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is something a little bit different. So yesterday I noticed that Geofront put out an edited transcript of the Trails to Azure drama CD Road to the Future, which is supposed to kind of bridge the gap a little bit between the two games. I was previously aware of it, but I had never bothered to actually uh, like listen to it or, or read a transcript, and I was going to read it on my own time, and I got about like a paragraph or two in, and then I was like, you know what, this would kind of make a fun video, just reading this uh, out loud and kind of reacting and maybe making, maybe even making a few jokes in the process. Oh boy, let's not get too spicy though. And also, this gives a chance to give a bit of an update on the Trails of Zero Let's Play, which uh, should be starting in two days. Uh, so whenever the patch comes out Saturday, I would like to have videos out that same day. Now, I don't know if we exactly know the like what time frame, like time zone wise, when it'll be released, but assuming everything goes smoothly, I would like to have at least like a couple videos out on Saturday, like the first few parts of the Let's Play. Assuming like if something bad were to happen and for some reason I'm not able to record or like something comes up this weekend, as far as I know, I'll be able to record Saturday, but just in the off chance I can't, then worst case scenario, videos would start going up Monday and I'd probably, you know, upload a, like several Monday to kind of catch up. But hopefully we'll be able to get stuff out on release day. And with that being said, I think it's about time for us to just kind of kind of jump in. So I think this thing is about like an hour, like the actual CD itself, like the, the official audio is about an hour long. So it'll probably take us around the same amount. And I think that's everything I wanted to say before we jump in. Uh, as far as like the, the music goes, uh, I'm probably not going to go out of my way to like sync up the appropriate tracks um, as we're reading this. So just a, just a note of forewarning. It's not really me attempting to do like an official or unofficial English audiobook of this. Just kind of kind of have some fun reading it out loud and sharing it with other people. So without further ado... Let's get started. One month after the DG cult incident that shook Crossbell, after the heated mayoral election had passed on the day we returned to our regular duties, Kia stood in the entrance of the SSS building holding a brand new school bag. I don't know. You sure you're ready, Kia? I mean, it's your first day. It might be better if I tagged along. I'm the readiest. I already memorized the way there and everything. Besides, Ryu and Arnie will be there with me. You worry too much, Lloyd. But... Uh, what do you think, Ellie? Honestly, you really have become a doting father. You were a kid once too. Didn't you want to walk to Sunday school with just your friends? That's that's beside the point. Surely you must be a bit nervous as well, right, Ellie? Tio, we're her guardians. Of course I am a little. Easy, warrior words. Don't go and spoil Keto's big day. No one's after her anymore. At least see her off with a smile, eh? A uh, wolf. That's that's Zite. He, he says wolf. See, that was Zeit saying that Randy's right. Oh yeah, because everyone speaks dog in the Trails universe. <laughs> well, you know, everyone, but uh, there are certain characters that they just speak dog. Don't ask questions. I get that, but it doesn't make it any easier. Did you forget? The new mayor wanted to have a chat, didn't he? Better not keep him waiting. Yeah, that's right. What exactly does it entail? I think I'll leave that mouthful to our new mayor. Today's a new day, SSS. Buck up and let's get rolling. Understood. Oh man, never a slow day here, is it? True, but we are used to it by now. Are you ready, Kia? We'll walk you out to the street, okay? Yeah, alright then. See you later, and then nothing bad ever happened ever again. The end. The SSS walks and talks on their way to the mayor's office in City Hall. You think I'd be used to having to come to City Hall, but nope. I got a bad feeling about this trip, though. If only you received the same premonition before each of your wasteful trips to the casino, Randy. Only one day back on the job and you're already putting the screws to me, eh, Tio Tot? I got off. We're here for work, remember? I mean, the casino is work, Lloyd. How else do you think we pay our bills? You think the CBD is, uh, C... C... P... D? Yeah, that's it. Is, uh, is paying above minimum wage? I highly doubt it. Uh, come in. Lloyd opens the door to Mayor Cross's office and enters the room and closes the door behind them. Good thing they, they mentioned that he closed the door behind them. Uh, that's the kind of etiquette I expect from old Lloyd and the gang. Pardon us. Ah, there you are, SSS. I've been waiting for you. Now announcing the arrival of the special support section. Congratulations on your election, Mr. Mayor. 
<laughs> I appreciate it. Sorry for calling you out here on such short notice. Don't mention it. Hmm. Took you all, all long enough. Dudley rises from the sofa on the left side of the room. Huh? Detective Dudley? Well, hello, Ellie. What a better way to start my day than by seeing my dearest friend. Maribel appears from behind the cabinet. The right behind the cabinet. What the hell? <laughs> Are we about to be, like, ambushed? You're here too, Belle? Didn't realize this was going to be a party. What's up? Seeing both Dudley and Mar Maria Bell. Mar Maria Bell? Is that what her name was? I thought it was Maria Bell. I don't know. Well, well I'm going to say Maria Bell because it's, uh, it seems more natural for me personally. Seeing both Dudley and Maria Bell together is a rare sight. Something strange is happening. Uh, would you mind filling us in, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> I'd be glad to. We have a proposal to strengthen how the SSS operates. Oh, boy. How we operate? What do you mean? As I'm sure you know, the state government is in a precarious position right now. We believe Erebonia and Calvert will use the cult incident as a pretext to further interfere and exert pressure on the state. Ah, uh, so that's what you mean. We do have the strength to resist them, mind you. Our state is capable of taking care of itself. I want nothing more during my turn than to demonstrate that to Erebonia and Calvert, as well as to the continent at large. If we don't, then Crossbell's autonomy will be, will be nothing more than a facade. I won't deny any of that, but how does this pertain to the SSS? What could we possibly do to help? Uh, remember that time when y'all saved the entire country? I don't know, like, probably like a few weeks before this is supposed to be taking place? Isn't it obvious? I have the most utmost faith in you all. Together with the Bracer Guild and Arios McLean, the SSS led the investigation that brought an end to the DG cult. You're an essential division of the CPD. I would go so far as to say that you all embody the spirit of Crossbell. Our ability to be self-reliant, also making money. That's pretty important for me, because I'm rich. Wow, that's uh, that's high praise. Honestly, we could have never have solved that case without everyone who supported us. I think you might be giving us a little too much credit. Uh, you're wasting your breath. I tried to tell him as much, but he wouldn't hear any of it. Father is rather fond of your little division. I mean, that's kind of rude. If he wants to think we're the greatest, you shouldn't stop him, okay? Yes, this is why I have such high expectations for the SSS in the coming months. In fact, I have a couple of proposals to make, Lloyd. How would you like to participate in special training to hone your skills as a detective? Special training? Dudley steps forth. I won't deny that you helped save Crossbell from disaster last month, but you also showed a severe lack of finesse and inability to follow procedure in doing so. Procedure? Friggin' country's about to be destroyed. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't fill out the right form, Lloyd. Never mind. Go back to school. Easy for you to say. I do not recall the first division having to fight any fiends or demons. T.O. And yes, I won't deny it. I know I still have a long way to go as a detective. Good. That's why you'll be coming with me. Where? So the first division, obviously. We'll be the ones to conduct your training, Bannings. But we'll be starting from the basics and putting you through all the paces all summer long. Wait, you mean the first division, right? As in the highest unit in the Crossbell to police, where the elite of the elite gather? That's wonderful, Lloyd. Wasn't your brother a part of the first division once? Yeah, he was. I get to train in the same division that guy was a member of? As you should know, the first division is tasked with high-profile cases, including ones political in nature, both foreign and domestic. However, we're not limited to only solving murders and other high crimes. It falls on our division to rein in organized crime and keep the foreign intelligence agencies in check. Crossbell is where the entrance of several nations collide. We strive to keep the peace here in spite of it all. You four have been on duty for nearly half a year now. Surely you finally understand how difficult our division's job is by now, Bannings. Uh, no, actually, you guys suck. You don't do anything. I do. Good, this will be anything but a vacation. While you're with us, you'll be starting from over from scratch. There's going to be a lot of slack for you to pick up, Rookie. You had better be ready. Dudley. Maria Bell chuckles to herself. Lloyd isn't the only one who has a unique offer on the table, my dear Ellie. Uh, pardon? Now that Speaker McDowell has also taken office, he's begun the process of reorganizing the Crossbell diet. Naturally, that also means restoring its reputation and diplomatic connections. To that end, he'll be traveling abroad. Grandfather told me as much last time we spoke, but what does that have to do with me? It's simple. Father would like you to accompany him during his travels. Excuse me? Uh, think of what good it would do for the SSS, and frankly, the Crossbellian government could use your help. A sharp, beautiful young woman. So don't talk about, like, accompaniment, and then also talk about how beautiful she is. You're, you're giving the wrong vibe, dude. 
Combine that with your experience. Also, this is a deer line. I thought this was Mar Maria Bell the whole time. Combine that with your experience and political savvy you've already gained, and you'll be quite the asset in helping us reestablish our diplomatic partnerships. I understand where you're coming from, but shouldn't a responsibility like this be left to someone who's more... I won't hear any more of that line of thinking. After all the studying you've done abroad and the connections you've made, I'd say you're plenty qualified. It's the inroads you've made with the international academics that made you particularly valuable. Take my word for it. I'm your best friend, so no one knows how capable you are better than I do. Though I must admit, I'm not too keen on the idea of seeing you leave Crossbell. I shudder to think of the crippling depression that will grip me if I can't have my Ellie dearest within arm's reach. Aren't you exaggerating ever so slight? I would never. Maria Bell holds Ellie in a tight bear hug. Emphasis on the bear aspect. But Bell, you don't have to hug me so tightly out of nowhere. Oh, my dear sweet Ellie, your delicate porcelain features, the silky smooth skin, this beautifully captivating face. Once again, like this, this, uh, this sounds like she's being kidnapped for illicit activities. I can't bear the thought of parting with them. Ellie manages to struggle free of Maria Bell's hold. Bell, that's enough. Well, looky here, getting quite the show. Don't you just love it when two beauties bond like this? Bonk. Bonk Randy. He deserves to be bonked. Things are becoming rather scandalous. Um, Miss Croix, we are standing in the mayor's office. Might I ask that we keep this meeting professional? Excuse you, detective, but the flame of love is something that cannot be stopped. I suggest you leave it be, lest you get burned. Love might be a tad too strong. Listen up, Ellie. Joining Speaker McDowell on this trip will have sizable ramifications on the future of Crossbell. I know that as well as anyone, which is why I've already signed off on Father's proposal, much to my chagrin. Oh, but what if I accompany you? That way we wouldn't have to be apart for even a single day. We could sleep in the same bed and I get to wake up to your angelic sleeping face every single morning. Lady, you've got a problem, okay? Well, wait, the, the same bed? Lloyd, what are you imagining? And you, Belle, I keep telling you not to give people the wrong idea about us. Well, I understand that you don't want to have to say goodbye to Ellie, but if you went on this trip too, I don't know how the IBC's day-to-day -day would ever stay afloat. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to stay and bear being without her for a little while. Fine, if I must, given my position at the company, I'm not free to just up and leave Crossbell, though I sorely wish I could. Honestly, I'm relieved. Knowing you, Belle, you weren't joking about coming along. You two got a big summer ahead of you by the sounds of it. I'm feeling a little left out, to be honest. I have to agree. Remember that Ellie going abroad won't be just for the benefit of Crossbell as a whole. The inroad she makes will be invaluable for the SSS when she returns. Having those sorts of connections is priceless for a detective. Doubly so in a city as large as Crossbell. You can't have too many resources at your disposal. Well, uh, what do you think? It's not a bad deal for either of you. How do you feel about this, Lloyd? Lloyd takes a moment to collect his thoughts. With all due respect, Mr. Mayor, this isn't something I can give an answer to right this second. This is a decision that affects the entirety of the SSS. I can't make it alone. Lloyd. I'll be damned. Spoken like a true leader, my man. Well said, Lloyd. You're absolutely correct. Take as much time as you need to make your decision. You're free to return home and discuss this among yourselves before committing one way or the other. Thank you. I appreciate it. I agree. Think long and hard before you jump, Bannings. May we look forward to hearing your response. And with that, we are on to page two. And we're gonna, we're gonna take a take a hydration break for a second. Later that night, we went home after meeting with the mayor. Silverware clinks and clatters against dishes before being set down on the table. Ah, that was great. Now comes the dishes. Lloyd stands and begins collecting the plates. Don't sweat it, man. We'll get this one. Are you sure? Tonight was supposed to be me and Ellie's turn. Ah, uh, I said don't worry about it. Randy takes the plates from Lloyd. You got some mulling over to get to, don't you? The dishes are small time. Andy, I want to help too. Kia jumps to her feet and collects the remaining dishes, breaking every single one in the process. As thoughtful as ever, Kia. On my mark, these dishes will have met their match. Go! Go! The three go about cleaning up the table. Say, Ellie, uh, would you mind keeping me company on the roof for a bit? Sure. The night air blows softly as Ellie and Lloyd open the door to the roof. Closing it behind them, the two walk to the railing, overlooking the humming city below. 
Breeze is always so nice up here. You're right. Do you remember the last time the two of us were up here just like this? Yeah, it was kind of awkward because I had no idea what to say commentary-wise because it went on for like 10 minutes. How could I forget? We were at a dead end during a tough case and had gotten roadblocked by Hey You and Revanche. That was only a few months ago, but it feels like a lifetime already. I remember you telling me about your parents, that they moved abroad when you were little, that you told me what led you to join the CPD. I felt like I understand you, understood you a lot better after that night. Which made you happy? Which what? Which made me happy? Did it? Of course. I was thankful you were able to open up to me. You were considering resigning from the SSS before that conversation, weren't you? I suppose. I remember you telling me that I was needed, and that was what made me happy. Now, that's a lie, because all we need is Randy and Lloyd. Those are the only ones we actually needed. I mean, Tio helped. Uh, Ellie, you know, she was there. I still feel that way now, you know. This is where you belong, Ellie. Lloyd. Not just me. Tio and Randy feel the same way. Oh, right. I knew that. I should have learned my lesson back then about how dangerous you can be, Lloyd. How can you not realize what saying something like that can do to a person? Huh? Is something wrong, Ellie? Do you want to add something to that? No, nothing at all. Ugh. Light breeze sweeps across the rooftop. Anyway, about Mayor Croce's proposal. Oh, right. I think I'm going to accept it. You are? I spent six months with the SSS, but I still have so much experience to gain. Sure, Ellie, but don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sell myself short to say that I can't contribute as I am. Just half a year, we've accomplished a lot as a team. That's something I'm proud to say. And yet, you said it yourself back then, Lloyd. As long as we stick together, there's no barrier too tall for us to overcome. I still feel that way. But I also want to accomplish more as an individual. More than I'm capable of at the moment. Ellie, this is a real opportunity for me to assist the mayor. I was being selfish when I left home and joined the police at the start of the year, yet Grandfather understood why and forgave me. Now I can finally repay him for that support. That's a good point. What about you, Lloyd? Have you made a decision? No. Uh, to be honest, I'm still at a loss. I won't lie. I used to dream of following in my brother's footsteps and joining the 1st Division, and I could learn a lot from training with Dudley. When I think about it, I know this is a rare opportunity, and that's hard to pass up. Part of me wants to accept it so I can live up to the promise they see in me, and yet you're worried where that would leave the SSS, are you? Yeah, I am. Though I don't think Tio and Randy are ever going to let me hear the end of it if I try and use that as an excuse. <laughs> A solid deduction. They wouldn't be the only ones if you made your decision because of something like that. It's also hard to say whether the cult incident is truly resolved. Ernest went missing that night, and I still haven't come any closer to solving Guy's murder. And while Revanche may be gone, Heiyu is on the verge of becoming more active than ever. Crossbell still has its share of unresolved issues. Are we strong enough to face those challenges yet? I don't think we are. In which case, I completely empathize with what you said, Ellie. The door to the rooftop swings open in a hurry. Huh? There you guys are! Oh, Kia. What is it, Kia? Randy's making some tea, so he told me to find you guys. Oh, okay, we'll be right there. Randy and Tio are probably worried about us. Most likely. We should fill them in on what we spoke about. Hmm? Sorry, Kia. The four of us need to have a really important talk tonight. Important talk? It's something that concerns everyone in the SSS, so we want you to listen in too, Kia. Okie dokie. Great, let's head back downstairs. Together, Lloyd, Ellie, and Kia return to the SSS building. First, I wanted to let you know that I've decided to accept the mayor's proposal. I know that's going to leave you all shorthanded, so I'm sorry. You don't have you don't have to apologize. This is what you want to do, Ellie. Then we'll support you. What Lloyd said, we're in your corner no matter what. We'll find a way to manage, Ellie. A uh, wolf. Guys, you're going somewhere, Ellie? Yeah. Yes, I suppose I am. But it'll only be for a little while. She'll come back to us when she's ready for to, when she's done with her work. Yeah, she'll be back home before you know it, so be a good girl and sure we can hold the fort down until she gets back, Keto. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, I have an idea. What's up? Well, it'll be a while before Kia gets to see Ellie again, right? Why not throw a little going away party then? Say, like, a picnic? Lloyd, not a bad idea, Lloyd. What's a picnic? It's like a lunch you have together with everyone outside. Picnics are the bomb. You pick a pack a basket with burgers, sandwiches, pies, and a bunch of extra desserts. Then we can chow down on all of it together. Doesn't that sound like a blast, Keto? 
yeah, I want to go on a picnic, can we? Of course, we should start planning what we're going to pack right away. What kind of sandwiches should we make? We will also have to buy ingredients. Speaking of which, uh, would you mind picking me up a bottle of brandy when you go shop? Denied. The picnic is for Kia's sake, not your day drinking. And then they all laugh. Jeez, I can hear you five all the way from outside. Sergey casually strolls through the front door. Oh, hey, Chief. Sorry about that, Chief. I guess it's getting a little late. Don't worry about it. So, once I hear about a picnic, you need going to need a day off. Better take care of the paperwork yourself. Yeah, of course. Also, didn't you guys like just start working again? You're already taking a day off? What the hell, man? Actually, Chief, I should tell that you're going to be leaving with Speaker McDowell on his little tour, right? The mayor already filled me in. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry you had to find out that way. It's fine. Treat it as an extended leave so you can come back fresh and ready to go. You're going to be needing that experience anyway. Uh, kind of a backhanded compliment. Uh, yes, sir. Are you going to come with us to the picnic, Chief? Uh, it's not exactly my sort of thing. I'll probably just lounge around here with Zite. Uh, wolf, wolf. He says I will watch over the building if I have nothing better to do. I'm sure he didn't just say wolf, wolf. I'm a dog. Wolf, wolf. <laughs> you smug son of a... And then they all laugh again. And so on our next day off, we caught the bus to Amarica for our picnic. The engine of the bus rumbles as it ro rolls down the road. Wow, look how fast we're going. We'll be there in no time flat. Kia, don't stick your hands out the window. <laughs> Can you hear the overprotective father you've become? This reminds me of the first time we went to Armorica as a team. Remember when you two thought it'd be a good idea to walk? Oh uh, yeah, that was when we were looking into those monsters that attacked Armorica's crops. So easy on me. I was naive as to just how far the walk was going to be. Same here, man. That's a long fucking walk. There's so many monsters on the way too. Never in my life had I so greatly regretted a decision. Oh, well, life's all about learning from mistakes. We were also still on our first month of the team back then. There's no telling if the SSS was going to last. Not to mention, Ellie and Tio hadn't built up the stamina they have now, right? Naturally, working with the SSS has put me in the best shape of my life. Ooh, listen to her. You sure sound confident. You and Tio talk could always get off at the fork in the road and walk the rest of the way. I will do no such thing. Uh, what you guys talking about? Oh, just reminiscing about the first time we had to travel to Armorica Village for work. Yep, Mademoiselle Ellie and Tia Tot had the bright idea to walk there so we could stop and smell the roses. Go figure, they bit off more than they could chew and were winded before they even got halfway there. Hold on a second, Randy- Wow, what happened after that? Mademoiselle Ellie was keeled over on the side of the road all like, Oh, I can't possibly go on. I'm so hungry. I want to go home to my big mansion. And Tio Tot had this thousand arg stare in her eyes and was muttering, Mishy, <laughs> to herself. It was like she was in some kind of trance. Randy, one more word and I swear to Adios, do not believe a word he says, Kia. Randy is a proven pathological, pathological liar. Really? Then who should I believe, Lloyd? Well, uh, the thing is, the truth is always between one or two extreme viewpoints. Neither side is 100% right. The, you should look in the middle. Uh, Lloyd. Lloyd. Oh, Kia, look over there. See all those flowers blooming on the side of the highway? Aren't they pretty? Hey, you're right. Impressive dodge. He completely avoided the question. Evasion tank detected. Uh, why do you three only ever agree when it comes to making me out to be the bad guy? Have a little, another hydration pause. The orbital bus stops in the village and pulls away after letting its passengers disembark. All around, the sounds of nature fill the air. Birds chirp, insects buzz, and the trees wave at the wind. It's still a little early for lunch. You guys want to take a nap or something? I came all the way out here, though. Shouldn't we be doing something more to enjoy it than napping? Hey, Lloyd, what are all those people doing standing by that stream? Oh, they're fishing. Fishing? It is the sport of using a rod and bait to catch fish out of the water. Yeah, I suppose you've never been fishing before, have you? <laughs> Want to go give it a shot? Uh-huh. Guess we'll be needing a rod and bait of our own. The general store probably has some gear we can rent. Uh, Paul's funky transitional backbeat? Just take your, take your word. 
take take the you know the transcript's word there's a funky transitional backbeat here the stream burbles as the rippling water passes by the lure sails in from above and splashes into the water moments later it is pulled from below the surface i got a bite okay come to papa lloyd begins to reel in the fish there it is say this one's pretty cool huh the reel clicks increasingly faster as Lloyd pulls in his catch. The fish flies in the water and flops about on the end of the fishing line. Yeah, it's really neat. Man, another one? How much does that make? Well, he is a high-ranking member of the Fisherman's Guild. Is he, though? Because I'm pretty sure we, like, never turned in the Fisherman Guild stuff, like, at all. Oh, yeah. I guess you're in cahoots with those nut jobs. Is that where you learned to fish? Nah, I learned a long time ago from my brother. He'd take me and Cecile fishing from time to time. We'd have picnics like this, too. I never knew that. It was always Guy's idea, but he'd end up slacking off and napping while we did all the work. Thinking back on it, he was probably exhausted from his police work, even on the rare days off he had. No wonder did he take the opportunity to catch up on his sleep. <laughs> oh, what a touching story. I think I'm going to cry. I remember hearing Estelle is also an avid fisher. Yeah, she has quite the reputation among the Fisherman's Guild. It's a shame we didn't have a duel before they left town. Speaking of Estelle and Joshua, I hope those two are doing alright back home. Same. Anyway, that's enough fishing for me. Lloyd puts the freshly caught fish in a net with the rest of the day's haul. Uh, Tio, you alright? You're looking a little pale. Uh, yes, I... It's simply that seeing a live fish flopping around like that is... Well... What's up, Tio Tot? You scared of the fishies? N no, why would I be frightened? I simply do not like them and I am uncomfortable. I think I saw a word for that in the dictionary. What was it again? Oh yeah, scared. Are you going to be okay, Tio? I am fine. What about you, Kia? Are you not bothered? Nope, I love fish. Aren't their shiny scales so cool? I think they are cool. Suddenly, another lure is pulled into the stream as the fish tugs at the line. Oh, I have a bite, too. Stay calm, Ellie. Just carefully. I'm fine. I can handle this. Betty and herself, Ellie begins to turn the reel. Okay, good fish. Come on. Reeling harder, Ellie pulls the fish from the water. Ha, I got it. Wow, Ellie reeled one in. Not bad, you're on the scoreboard. That was impressive, Ellie. Have you done this before? During my father's hunting trips when I was a little girl, while he was hunting, Grandfather and I would fish off to the side while we waited for him to return. Deer hunting is a popular hobby among the nobility, is it not? Should have known a princess like you would have a dad that hunts. That was so cool, I want to try too. Okay, I'll walk you through it. First, hold the fishing rod tight. <laughs> Got it. Mind what's behind you is a pull back and then cast it, and then she hooks Randy right in the eye. The lure arcs through the air and plops into the stream. Oh, now you play the waiting game until a fish bites. It's not going to happen right away, so feel free to sit back and relax. I got a bite. What? Already? Just as the fish bites the lure, Kia and Lloyd hold the rod tight and try and reel the fish in together. Whoa, it's a big one. Keep reeling. Lloyd, are, are you okay, T Kia? She'll be fine. Come on, Kia. We can do this on three, okay? Okay. One... Two, three. With their combined strength, the fish is launched from the stream and left hanging on the rod's hook. Yeah, I caught one. Holy carp, that thing is gigantic. It really is. It must be twice the size of the one Lloyd caught. <laughs> you sure did it, Kia. Huh? Where'd Tia go? Uh... <laughs> Tio Tot down. I repeat, we got a spill on aisle, Tio Tot. Fish flopping the ice. And then there's a, a funky transitional backbeat. Once again, take the Texas word for it. After we had our fill of fishing, we headed back to Armorica to return the general goods store's a rod. An orbital radio softly plays inside the store. Uh, sure, just leave the rod over there. Thank you once again. Man, what the hell? Why was I the only one who didn't catch anything? Uh, are you feeling better, Tio? I am fine. I did not mean to cause alarm. Hey, Lloyd, what's this stuff? That, uh, it's honey, the village specialty. It has a reputation for being very sweet and delicious. Oh, wow. Why don't we pick up a jar and have uh, to have with our lunch? Yeah, great idea. Let's do that. Cool, I'd say we earned it. Next, we set on a campsite just off Old Armorica Road and divvied up the lunch boxes. Sounds of nature. Is everyone ready? Let's dig in. Let's eat. Quickly unwrapping their meals, the SSS hastily take to their food. Mm, it's so good. Morga's bread is peerless as always. Uh-huh, so yummy. The honey is really good too. 
They have plenty of fried chicken and sandwiches, Kia. Eat as much as you like. Oh boy, now I'm getting kind of hungry. Okie dokie. Randy gulps down his cup of tea. Mind pouring me a drink, Mademoiselle Ellie? Uh, sure. Ellie refills Randy's cup from a thermos. All right, here you go. Ha <laughs> ha, thanks. Immediately upon receiving the refilled cup, Randy makes short work of emptying it once again. Whew, that hits the spot. There's something about being under the sun that makes tea that much better, huh? You said it. Mind giving me a refill too? Not at all. Ellie refills Lloyd's cup. Hmm, I think chicken is my favorite. It is very good. You made it right, Lloyd. Yeah, but Ellie was the one who told me the recipe. The herbs add a lot of flavor. Don't sell yourself short. You're a pretty good cook. Talk about scoring hubby points like you needed any more advantages to get the girl's attention. I excuse me? <laughs> Don't joke about that. Lloyd, you haven't actually been thinking about getting married, have you? Well, what? No, Randy was only joking. See, this is what I'm talking about. How you fall ass backwards into being such a chick magnet anyway. Grade A certified hottie Cecile, Crossbell's cutest and cheeriest receptionist Fran, the continent renowned Ark and CL superstar Ilya, not to mention a bombshell like Risha, even Wendy from Ginton was your childhood friend. This is bullshit. How does one normie get so lucky? <laughs> that's, why, that's why Randy's the best boy. Would you knock it off already? You know there's nothing going on between me and any of them, and Cecile's practically family. What does she have to do with this? Any of them? That's the kind of thing you say when there are too many to count. Bless you too, Ellie. Tio, why are you looking at me like that? I was thinking, these are truly terrifying times we live in. How does someone so ignorant and oblivious rise to the rank of police detective? Wait, what? I was thinking the same thing. Lloyd is a clear and present danger to himself and the others. Ellie, you know I'm sitting right here. You're gonna get married, Lloyd? Can I be your wife? Ha <laughs> ha no can do, Keto. Afraid I'm gonna have to whip my own dad card out there and, out and shoot that idea down. Um, Kia, marriage isn't the kind of thing you bring up so suddenly. Much less to someone like Lloyd, Kia. You could do much better. Why am I getting singled out? What did I do to deserve this? Ah, that was delicious. I'm so full. I may have eaten too fast. You sure you don't want any more dessert, Keto? Nope, I'm good. Teal, your fruit punch was super yummy. I'm glad you liked it. That makes waking up early to prepare it worth the extra effort. We still have a whole day to ourselves. Does anyone else want to relax for a while? I could go for a little snooze. Wait, do you all mind if I say something before that? Huh? Why are you acting so formal all of a sudden? It's just... There's something I need to tell you all. Something to tell us? It's about the mayor's proposal to have me train with the first division. I think I'm going to accept it. Lloyd? Train? Think of it like Sunday school, but for a detective. Lloyd would go to the police headquarters every day to learn under the first division. But you're a grown-up, Lloyd. You still have to go to school? That's right. A detective never stops learning, even after they've grown up. May I ask what your reasoning is? The more I thought about it, the more I agreed with what Mayor Crow said. Crossbow is going to be in a tough spot for the rest of the year. The global network will likely play a bigger role in the future of crime too, so there's a lot for me to learn. Not to mention there being new threats in the corner now that the Mafia has bit the dust. Their Boney and Calvert aren't going anywhere. Well, we'll probably be crossing paths with them sooner or later. I wouldn't doubt it. The SSS isn't equipped for something like that as we are. Even taking the cult incident into account, Mayor Crow said we led the charge to solve that case, but I don't think it's that cut and dry. I do. We were there, and no one knows better than us what happened that night. You got a point. We would have never made it out to the end if not for Noel bailing us out. Let alone Dudley and Chief Sergei covering for us in the city. It was only thanks to them we managed to see it through to the end. To say nothing of our greatest allies that night, the Bracer Guild. There's no telling how things would have ended without the help of Arios, Estelle, and Joshua. Um, once again, gonna have to doubt that. Arios did nothing but show up and save us when we were all at max HP and had easily rebuffed the attack on IBC. And Estelle and Joshua, I mean, you know, they were there. They didn't fight or nothing, but they were there. Exactly, we weren't acting alone. It was the combined efforts of several people that allowed us to come out on top. But, what if we had to do it all over again? What if we were in a situation where the CGF couldn't mobilize and we didn't have the guild to provide backup? Well, unfortunately, there would not be much we could do, not as we are. Can't argue with that. Neither can I, and I know I need to change that. I'm not saying the SSS should always be able to solve anything and everything by itself, but we can't ignore that in a worst case scenario, that's what it could come down to. If that were to happen, I would want us to be prepared enough to protect our friends and loved ones. Protect our home. Crossbell. Lloyd. Well said, Lloyd. 
Training with the first division would do more than just help me grow as a detective. It would teach me what kind of threats Crossbell is up against and the power we need to protect everyone from them. Still, it wouldn't be very leader-like of me to abandon the SSS now. Selfish is more like it. You don't gotta worry about that, dumbass. Randy punches Lloyd's arm. Hey, not so rough, Randy. How's that selfish? You want to go through with this journey to help make the SSS better, don't you? I don't know if journey is how I'd put it, but I suppose so. Yeah, that's the end goal. Then why would any of us ever hold it against you? I agree with Randy for once. Theo. Needless to say, I echo all those sentiments. Let's do our best for the sake of the SSS, Lloyd. <laughs> Ellie. Lloyd, you're just leaving just like Ellie is? You're not gonna be able to, I'm not going to be able to see you anymore? It's not like that, Kia. I'll still be commuting to the police headquarters from the SSS building. So we'll still be living together just like we have been. Honestly, it really won't change that much. It's not as big a deal as Ellie leaving. Oh, well, uh, you had me worried there. What you sweating about, Kia? There's no way Lloyd would ever leave you behind. It would be difficult for any of us to survive without our dose of vitamin Kia. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good line, Tio. I was thinking the same thing, Tio. Speaking of which, I'm feeling a little faint. I think I'll be taking my dose via hug right now, Kia. You got it. Tio and Kia share a tight hug. And why would you ever hug me like that, Tio Todd? I'm cuddly too, like a cactus. Sheesh, and you're calling me prickly. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm going to give training with the First Division everything I've got. That might mean the SSS has to put things on hold for a little while. So until we're back, I hope you are too refined what it is you're best at so we can hit the ground running again. Well, we're best at, eh? Hmm. Oh, I'm gonna need another hydration break. A few days later, there's a quiet rap on the door. Uh, yes, come in. There you are, Tio. I've been looking forward to this day. Uh, hello. It's so rare if you to, uh, Roberts, that's the, the guy she used to work for, right? The, the dude with the staff who was always, uh, getting stepped on by Tio and her, uh, mannerisms, I suppose. I don't know how I wanted, I wanted to phrase that differently and then I forgot how I wanted to phrase it. It's so rare for you to be the one to call me, so what could be so important that you'd want to come to the branch to meet about? And I'll just stand there, come in, come in! You insist. Tio enters the room and finds a seat. So, uh, would tea be alright? I could always brew you up some coffee and add plenty of milk just like you like it. Oh, and I think I got some orange juice in the fridge too. That will not be necessary. I do not expect this to take long. Uh, say it ain't so. I was hoping you, we, you would stay so we could catch up. I even have a box of chocolate that, you know I can't say that word, gifted me. I'll go fetch it. Chief. <laughs> I'm getting carried away again, aren't I? But I called myself, so you don't have to be mad at me, Tio. I have given you more than enough warnings by now. Oh no. I made my sweet little Tio angry again. <laughs> How am I ever going to make this right? You can start by sitting down, Chief. I can do that, but it feels like I'm the guest instead of you. Robert sinks into his chair. So, uh, what does he want to talk about? Well, truthfully, I've been considering a return to Foundation Headquarters. You mean going back to Le Mans State? Yes. What would compel you to? An opportunity to improve the Aeon system and Orville staff for one. I would also like to summarize and deliver my report on the staff's use during the DG called incident. You do know how far it is to Le Mans State, right? Of course I do. Do I know like I can read a map, Chief? No, 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 that's not what I meant. It's just that, you know, if you return to headquarters, that means you'd have to leave the SSS for a while. Are you sure you want to do that, Tio? The thing is, the SSS has already decided to go on hiatus. What? It has? That's strange. It's the first time hearing of it. Yes, because I'm reporting it to you now? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I suppose you are. Huh. Therefore, returning to the Foundation should not present a problem. I would like to fill out the paperwork for me to transfer back to Headquarters. But if you do that, you'll be drowning in endless reports to file while you're there. You might even get roped into contributing to whatever new research they're up to. It could be months before you're allowed to return to Crossbell. I am prepared for that. So, until you're back, I hope you two are fine, but it is your best at, so we can hit the ground running again. What I'm best at. I will not let you down, Lloyd. It's a generic acoustic guitar outro. <laughs> like I was just generic. Like man, they're not even they're not even saucing it up a little bit. Wait, uh, what if I went in your stead, Tio? <laughs> if you won't, I can bring back loads of souvenir. Uh, Tio Stare. No, anything but that. I'm sorry, Tio. 
instead of apologizing, simply keep your mouth shut next time. Fine, okay. I'll fill out the paperwork to your transfer to headquarters, Tio. And I will let you get to it. I'm leaving now. Tio rises from her seat and makes way for the exit. Already? At least stay and relax for a while. I have to go home and begin packing. Oh, before I forget? Yeah? I had another idea. I want to take Yona with me. The swinging open of the bar's door is accompanied by the chime of a bell. Randy saunters in as the band at the back softly croons some soulful jazz. Welcome, uh, just one this evening? Nah, party of two. Oh, there she is. Randy gestures to the waiter and makes his way across the bar. Alright, how do I want to approach this one? Here goes nothing. Ah, beautiful, here, uh, hello beautiful, here by yourself, may I ask you to bestow a heavenly smile to me, guide this lost home home, will you? Uh, sorry, I'm waiting for someone, wait, Randy, what's up? What has gotten into you? What do you mean, what? I just thought it'd be funny, do I look like I'm laughing? Randy removes his coat and takes a seat at Muriel's table. <laughs> nope, you look like you're Muriel. I cannot believe you right now. Muriel's gripping is cut sh griping is cut short by the raider's approaching footsteps. Uh, welcome, may I take your order, sir? A whiskey, my good man, and make it 12-year red. 12-year, yeah, 12-year red label, straight single. Uh, very well, nerd. The waiter walks away. Gotta say, though, never expect you to ask me out like this. Wait, could it be? Excuse me? Remember that time we helped you look for that armored car's key and the old commander, the old commander lost? I told you that if you wanted to make it up to me, we could always take me out on a date. I remember that quest. Um, I remember not being able to find the stupid key. What? No, it's not because of that. Gotcha. You can't deny this was a date just now. If you wanted some more time alone with Orlando, all you had to do was ask. That's not it at all, you idiot. That was months ago. How do you still remember something like that? It was really hard to find the key, dude. The waiter returns. Here you are, sir. Straight 12-year red label single. Thanks, my good man. Cheers. Mandy raises his glass. Cheers to you as well. Joking aside, I do appreciate you agreeing to this. The two clink their glasses together in a toast. After taking a big drink, each places their glass back onto the table. So, how are things at the SSS? Is everything going well? Uh, no, actually. We've disbanded. I'm all alone, dude. It's so sad. Business as usual for the most part. Keto just started attending Sunday school. Keto is that little girl that lives with you, right? Kia? Yep, she's everyone's little ray of sunshine. We actually took her on a picnic the other day, too. You went on a picnic? I can't even fathom it. You really have changed, though it does sound kind of fun. Randy takes another swig of his whiskey. Yeah, never a dull day for us. That's so? So how about the stuff back at the unit? Are Carter and Raffy hanging in there? Yeah, they're fine, for the most part. You mean after what happened? I'm sure they had a tough time bouncing back. You remember, during the cult incident, the entire Belgard unit was brainwashed, myself included. We were supposed to be the Guardian Force, but we ended up attacking the citizens instead. I don't know about that. The only damage to the police was, was to the police and some buildings, right? Dads, you're all drugged. It wasn't your... There's no excuse for it, and the citizens aren't so forgiving. Well, I mean, they should be. Muriel. I'm sorry. There's no point in taking my frustrations out on you. It's cool. I get it. If it'll make things feel better, I'll take what you have to dish out. Yeah, I think it's tough to talk about this with anyone in the CGF. Andy. Actually, I've heard Belgard's Gate has been more like a morgue ever since that night. I want to believe it's not true, but it's plain as day. Morale is at an all-time low. No one has been keeping up with their training. They're too afraid of something like that happening again. What would happen right now if we were to be attacked? Everyone's walling in self-pity, unable to move on. Well, they're not going to get anywhere by standing still doing nothing. Randy takes another drink from his glass because my boy is an alcoholic. You think so too? Yeah, nothing helps to get you all, nothing helps you get your mind off of problems like working hard. When you're gasping for air and your muscles are burning, it's hard to think about anything else. And before you know it, time will have healed those wounds anyway. <laughs> At least you finally got a commander worth it, damn. Have you asked Sonya for her advice? Yeah, the commander essentially feels the same way you and I do. She thinks the Guardian Force's focus should be on improving itself. Well, you know what they say, great minds think alike. Actually, Randy, that's why I asked you here. Randy takes another drink, because he has seriously got a problem. Huh? What are you talking about? Please, please return to the CGF. We want you to join us for a few months as a drill instructor. It's a new training program that Commander Balls has designed. Uh, or Balez? I can't remember how you say it. Well... Are you serious? I think, I, I just call her Sonya every time, right? Because I never learned how to actually pronounce it. 
Commander Sonya still thinks very highly of you, not just your combat skill, but your tenacity as well. The CGF needs that kind of spark right now. That's why she's been considering putting in a formal request for the police to have you transferred, but I stopped her because I wanted to talk it over with you first. That's what's up. I know I'm asking a lot. I know that you had no regrets leaving the CGF behind last year, and more than anything, I know how important the SSS is to you. No, it's, it's not like that. Don't try and deny it, Randy. I've seen how your eyes look when you're around them, how gentle they are. So if you turn us down, I would understand. But if it comes to that, I at least want it to be face to face. Here we go. So until we're back again, I hope you two refine what it is you're best at so we can hit the ground running again. What I'm best at, huh? Randy takes a drink. Pardon? Muriel? I'm in. If you got a spot for me, then you got yourself an instructor. R really? Would I lie to you? What about the SSS? Don't worry about it. We're going on hiatus anyway. You are? I need something to keep me sharp in the meantime. So do me a favor. Let Sonya know that I'm coming back. All right then, hun. Thank you, Randy. Randy. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? It's not like you to pull the real talk card with me all of all people. I'm trying to thank you. What's wrong with sincerity? Nothing. You're just throwing me off my game is all. I expect you to pull out a whistle and be like, I'm going to make you wish you never accepted this offer, soldier. Drop and give me 20. Excuse me? You're making it sound like all I care about is training and drills. R Muriel angrily takes a drink from her glass. You don't? Oh, my bad. I guess I mistook you for the CGF's warrant officer, Muriel. Or, I still have, I have no, I don't know how you say her name, dude. Uh, I, I've probably been saying it wrong this entire time, but you know, whatever. Oh, shut up. Anyway, I guess this means we're comrades again. I suppose so. Welcome back, Randy. On to, on to page six. We're, we're actually going to finish this in what, what seems like under an hour. Unless this one's just like really long. And just like that, Randy and Tio had found their callings for the summer. Soon after, we had a team meeting and gave our reports to Chief Sergei. Mayor, let me know what you two had accepted his proposal, but I didn't think I'd be losing Tio and Randy too. <laughs> Whoops. Will that be an issue? Nope, I was just thinking it was funny. Funny? You know, the mayor talked to me about recruiting new members to the SSS soon. Wait, what? N new recruits? Are you saying if we leave now, we might not have a job when we get back? No, you don't have to worry about that. I said new members, not replacements. The original SSS isn't going anywhere. I hope not. So when you all get back, things will probably be more lively around here than before. In more of the ways than one. Sure. Why did that last part sound so ominous? Enough about that. If we're doing this, then we may as well have a formal disbandment, even if it's just for show. Randy Orlando? Sup. Theo Plato? Sir. Ellie McDowell? Uh, sir. Lloyd Banding? Sir? I officially approve and acknowledge your intentions for the coming months. The SSS is hereby temporarily disbanded. In the meantime, you're all still officially members of the police, so remember your duties and continue carrying yourselves with pride. I expect you each to come back better than ever. Yes, sir. That's it for me. Good luck, kids. I'll try and keep this place in order while you're gone. Thanks, Chief. Soon the dame came for the others to depart. Ellie plops down a suitcase in front of her. And, Mademoiselle Ellie, your luggage is big enough to be a new Crossbell City District. What the hell is there? Is in there. I'll be attending formal events, so I have to pack plenty of dresses and shoes. I'm only bringing the essentials. Ooh. That sounds like more trouble than it's worth. You're traveling comparatively right light, Randy. I'm just going over to the CGF to help out with their rehabilitation training. What I'm taking is plenty. What about you, Tio Tot? You look like you didn't pack much either. I already had most of my belongings shipped ahead of time. Traveling with large luggage is an annoyance. Void and key approach. You three all look like you're set. Lloyd, Kia, uh, take care, okay, guys? Kido, listen. Sorry we gotta leave for a while. Things might be a little lonely around here. Why? Well, because, I mean, you're all gonna come home, right? Ellie, Tia, Randy, I can be a good girl and hold down the fort for you until you do. Kia, of course we'll be back before you know it. We are not leaving right this instant, Ellie. Oh, come on, you two. Now's not the time to cry. Even Kia's holding it together. I know that. I'm going to require one more of dose of vitamin Kia before I leave. You got it. Tio and Kia share a hug. Don't leave me out. Ellie, Tio and Kia share a group hug. Hey, me next. Randy, relax. I'm just joking. But hey, at least let me give you a pat on the head, Keto. Randy gives Kia an aggressive head pat. <laughs> and that's more like it. 
I believe everyone has stocked up on enough Kia energy to last the summer now. Hey, can we all make a friendship vow? Friendship vow? It's something Sister Marble taught us. Sister Marble taught you that in Sunday school? Yeah, she said if some, it's something friends do when they say goodbye but promise to meet again. That does seem to be fitting. Right? We all have to get in a circle. Yes, it says gets into formation. Okay, uh, what next? Now everyone put your right hands out and place them atop mine. Alrighty, like this? Yeah, next put your left hand on the shoulder of the person on your left and say their name. Then at the very end, we all throw up our hands and shout, See you soon! Uh, got it. I'll start us off. Ellie, Tio, Randy, Keto, Lloyd, and then on three, one, two, three, see you soon! <laughs> I'm feeling all fired up. Me too, that was a great idea. A perfect way to say goodbye. Yeah, but this isn't goodbye for us. We'll be together again before we know it. You're right. See ya, pal. Don't miss out. Don't miss me too much. I mean, come on. We could never uh, not miss Randy too much. Take care of Kia for us, okay? Make sure to look after Zite and Coop. Coop? Who the hell is Coop? Oh, the cat. Yeah. Don't worry, I will. Take care, guys. I'm surprised I remembered that. <laughs> Have a safe trip, Ellie, Tio, and Randy. We will. This is goodbye for now, Kia. Be a good girl and wait for us to come home, Keto. I will. Stay safe. Ellie, Tio, and Randy leave through the front door of the SSS building. Kia, don't stop waving goodbye to them until they were... Oh, Kia didn't stop waving goodbye to them until they were fully out of sight. And so the Crossbell Police Department Special Support Section was officially on hiatus. But this wasn't the end. Only a new beginning. One that would make us stronger and ready to overcome the most daunting barriers in our path yet. Nice to meet you. I'm Ellie McDowell of Crossbell State. I once spent time studying the Calvard Republic, and as it so happens, I'm currently accompanying my father on his uh, grandfather on his tour around the continent. I am using it as an opportunity to meet as many people as I can. You say you studied abroad? What did you major in? Economics and politics, but I'm not particularly interested in the latter. The Republic's democratic system and how it reshaped Calvard's long history in particular has always piqued my interest. I believe there's a lot of Crossbell. There's a lot Crossbell can learn from a nation like yours to improve its own government. The hum of orbital energy. I have always taken the caloric requirements associated with activating the Aeon system into consideration. However, with this new material compound, the Foundation is researching. It may be possible. Mm, good, it should work then. I would like to run another test, Chief. Uh, sure, I'm good to go on my end. You're clear to start as soon as you're ready, Tio. Aeon System, activate. The Aeon System charges up. A bird squawks in the distance. Crossbow Police Department, Special Support Section, transferee Randy Orlando, the commander requested me personally. I've been placed in charge of overseeing the Bell Guard unit's rehabilitation. Hey, you there, knock it off. You think I got time for this? Last time thing I envisioned was me coming back here to be an instructor. I should be the one sighing. Are you sure you're cut out to be an instructor? I was hoping you'd do most of that kind of work. All right, listen up. I'm going to push you maggot so far that you won't remember what laughing feels like. Look alive. Dudley and Lloyd walk and talk as they approach the office. You sure you're ready, Bannings? Of course. Suit yourself, then. I will say, the way you act does remind me of him sometimes. Oh. Forget I said anything. Past here are the First Division's offices. Show yourself in. Dudley and Lloyd enter the office and close the door behind them. All right. Here goes nothing. Attention, everyone. This is the trainee I told you about. You're up, Bannings. Right. Lloyd steps forward to introduce himself. My name is Lloyd Bannings. I'll be training here with the First Division starting today. This is my first year with the department, so I'm looking forward to learning everything you have to teach me. That day, our paths diverged and our journey started anew. But no matter how far apart we are, our hearts will remain as one. And with us, we carry the vow we made to one another. We will reunite one day as the Special Support Section. And then, uh, that's it. Like, what, what, almost an hour? Uh, that was really interesting. I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad I went, uh, made the effort to, to read it all, and I don't really know exactly how well this works as a video, just because, uh, with it not having, like, clear, uh, like, you know, doing all, like, I don't have enough voices to do every character, right? Like, I just, uh... I'm not I'm not well versed enough as as a voice actor to have like eight different voices for all the all the characters in this, so I think it probably is a little unclear to listen to since I can't like uh switch between them all that well and then plus when you're you know switching on the fly between so many different voices it's uh pretty difficult to keep it all uh in track, but I'm I'm I enjoyed it. It was fun for me, which is all that matters. So 
you know, good little good little update on the on the trails of Zerg. Get us get us prepped and ready. And I'm you know, things seems like it was you know, kind of somewhat important for some setting the stage for the next game. So Overall, good. Enjoyed seeing the characters again. Randy is still the greatest. I love him. He's so good, dude. And uh, everyone else also pretty good. I think we'll go ahead and uh, stop here. I don't think of anything else really worth mentioning. So Trails of Zer. Hopefully we'll be starting in a couple days on Saturday. This video should actually just go up today. I'm probably going to go ahead and like render it out and upload it um, in a few hours. So... Yeah, I'm ExtraCheesy87. Stay tuned for the Trails of Zero Let's Play. And bye, guys.